think those those two guys had only three in the second half. We had a chance to win the game. It was a hard fought game. Both teams competed and thought they made some big plays down the stretch. I thought Alex got fouled. I thought Brad got fouled. Um, but that's the way it goes. And but they made some big plays. The big fella came in, Claxon, and made some big plays at the rim and the hand ones that we don't, those are shouldn't let those guys uh, foul. I mean, get one free throw. It's, uh, those bigs don't shoot the ball well from the line, and we want to put them on the line. Uh, they have too many of those easy ones. I thought in the first half they had eight, basically eight dunks. And and Scott, they they get the rebound with over a a, sh a, sh a shade over twenty seconds remaining, and you guys didn't foul until three seconds left, uh, down five. Why why did it take so long to foul there? Yeah, well, we tried the trap first, and we thought we had the steal, and then they squeaked out of it. We should have fouled. It was should I thought we had a chance to foul at twelve and at ten, and then we didn't foul. Neil. Scott, when Brad is getting those offensive foul calls, I think, like you said, already three, is there anything you can do to, you know, sway officiating? He, he didn't get to the line very much. Um, is there anything you can do to help open him up when they're playing that box and one on him? Yeah, I mean, they were, they were denying. They were, they were putting two guys on him, three guys on him at times. And he did a good job of, of, reading it and making plays. Uh, look at our bigs. Our bigs score 20 points and, and 12 points. I'm not, not, a, not anything out of the key either. It's because they were putting all kinds of attention on Brad and he was finding guys and Russell was finding guys. We started the game off well and our, we didn't come into the game. Our bench did not come into the game and lock into the game plan. We gave him a three right away. We gave him a, we turned it over a few times, but we need everybody. We don't have a lot of room for air. Guys are out, but we need everybody. To, we need everybody to be in. And we can't, we can't daydream when you come into the game. And I thought that that second unit did not play the way they're capable of playing. I know DB is not playing, but that's no excuse. We got to still be mentally into the game. You're not going to make every shot. You're not going to read every play, but you got to be into the game mentally. It's the easiest thing to do is play hard and be into the game mentally. Chase. Scott, uh, Brad took 15 shots, um, eight fewer than his season average. What did they do to just deny him the ball and deny him shot attempts? No, they were double teaming. They were leaving our bigs. And a lot of times, uh, when bigs do that, our bigs have to make a play. They got to be, Brad has to make the right read, which he does, and he did. And our bigs have to make the play. They're beca they become the quarterback. And they did. Look, they were, whatever they were, 14 for, for, 20, for 21. Um, and they were all basically layups or dunks. Uh, that's what, I mean, there's going to be nights where Brad only gets 15 shots. I'm just surprised he didn't get to the free throw line more. They were, they, were, they were doing a good job of being physical. I guess they were being physical without fouling. And as you move forward for the time being without Davis, how can you guys generate more three-pointers and three-point attempts? Well, it's, it's not, that's not the strength of our team. You know, we haven't shot the ball well all year. I still think we're a better shooting team, but, but, but the season is over halfway and we're, whatever we are, 28th in the league and three-point percentage. But you still can win the game. You know, we won, and you know, we were right there with only seven makes. You got you to gotta be able to generate points from the in the paint, and you got to generate points at the free throw line. And we got two guys that can do that, and they're going to have to continue to do that. And if they double team, they, they got to make the right reads, uh, and our bigs are going to have to finish around the rim. We got, we got enough. I mean, we obviously we're missing nine – potentially nine uh, threes a game attempts with DB. I mean, even when they, we played these two teams, he shot 10 and he shot 12. He, was, he made three and he made four. That's not that he didn't, he didn't make, uh, make more, 
I would love for them to do that, but just having them on the court, you have to be able to guard them and it opens up a lot of things. And, but we got, we got to make shots. I mean, it's, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to load up. They're going to plug in on the weak side and we got to make the swing, swing passes and we got to be able to step up and make those shots. Zach. Hey, coach, uh, season high 40 minutes for Rui tonight. And last game, he played the entire second half. How do you think he's responding to the extended minutes? Well, I, I think he's he's gotten better these last, I don't know, five games or so. You see a little uptick in his play. He's have 20 points now, I think three of those games. He just has to keep working and, and the, the minutes. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a young man that he should be able to handle. Uh, minutes. We're not going to do much tomorrow. We, we had a couple of days off uh, going into this game. We practiced for 35 minutes and, uh, yesterday. So it's the minutes. I'm not worried about his minutes. I know everybody, everybody's going to be banged up or sore at this point of this, the season. Um, but I thought he, I thought he played a solid game. He, I thought he could have made a one, one important read uh, on Claxon's dunk late in the game and he had to end one. I thought Rui was going out with uh, Green on the left corner, but I thought he should have stayed and either contest the shot or foul him to put him on the free throw line for two. But he's played, go he's played well. Russ, do you have productive nights um, from the starting lineup? Rui's aggressive, you set the tone, all the things that kind of work for you guys. What do you take away from um, just it coming out on the wrong end? Uh, we just need all guys to be ready. Some of that, you know, we put ourselves in a position to win the game. Uh, we just need all, everyone on the team to be ready to go. Scott has kind of explained to us throughout the season with the, the fouling at the end there, where you guys obviously don't have much time to practice, not much time to go over it. What do you see from your perspective? Um, you know, some of that stuff is just, you got to have an instinct to be ready to go, especially when the game online makes plays, play without fouling, um, you know, ain't too much to explain about that. Thanks, Russ. Mm -hmm. Chase. Hey Russ, um, what changed do you think after you guys built that that big early lead up 14 points? Um, I'm not sure. I'll watch the film and see exactly what happened, but um, there was definitely relaxation on the defensive end. So I'll look at it and see. And um, you know, three point shooting has, has been kind of a struggle for you guys all year. And now you're gonna be without Davis for a little while. What can you do to generate more three-point shooting? Um, right now, we just focus on winning. That's it. Uh, we're just trying to focus on generating a win. And that's how we, however we can get it. That's how we're going to get it. Fred. Russ, on a, on a similar tone, Scott mentioned that he thought the, the turnovers were a lot because of spacing issues tonight without Davis. How, how does uh, that more cramped spacing affect the way that you maneuver? Um, it doesn't. What uh, you guys had kind of turnover issues, and and Scott mentioned it was based on spacing. Uh, I'm I'm wondering, you're you're a big man who who kind of tends to spend a lot of time inside the three point line, but how how can you affect that spacing, or at least how do you feel kind of cramped spacing when you're spending time inside the three point line? You know, I'm trying to play off of for us and uh, and whoever got the ball. If I was going one on one on the on the block. I'm trying to space out on the baseline. So whenever he makes a move, I just go off of him. Just trying to go the opposite way. If he goes, if he goes middle, I'm trying to go baseline. If he goes baseline, I'm trying to go middle for the for the ball. But uh, my job is pretty easy with the spacing. Neil. Alex, where, where would you say your comfort level is with Brad and Russ now in pick and roll situations? And why do you think you guys were able to be so successful against Brooklyn's interior defense tonight. Yeah, there was there was overplaying a lot, like especially with Brad. There was doubling him the whole game, trying to get the ball out of his hand. So whenever I set a screen, I was trying to just be available at the rim, and they was hung up on a weak side with the, with the shooters. So that I mean, those bigs was we was getting wide open layups. That was the problem. I mean, and Roz did a great job passing the ball too. But he, every time he he's on the post, he always demands two players on him. He did a great job passing it. Chase. Hey, Alex. Um, obviously, 
James Harden, uh, no matter who it is, he's a tough guy to defend. How, how did you feel like the the guys who did defend him tonight did? You know, Garrison and and Esoc spent some time on him as well. I mean, I mean guarding somebody like James Harden and Kyrie Irving has got to be the whole team effort. Uh, I mean, at times we did some good job and sometimes it was poor. Sometimes we overhelp, like, because, I mean, he, you're going to get beat. When you play somebody like James Harden, he's so good. He's either going to get you with a step back or you're going to get going to the rim. And the hardest part is for bigs is you got to kind of, you know, fake at him, make him think. And, you know, sometimes at times he's successful. And then I think we did a great job late in the game. I mean, but he, he he made some good passes. I think Kyrie actually made more um, plays down the road when he got beat. I mean, we got beat and then he, he uh, passed it to the big. And, you know, when it comes to three-point shooting, uh, you know, you lose Davis Bertans for a couple weeks. Um, what can you guys do as an offense to, to generate outside shooting in space? I mean, you just gotta keep working. It's not just about shooting. You just, this has gotta be team effort. Play, we, I don't think it's about shooting, but it's about offense. We just gotta keep getting stopped. When we play our defense, like, when we had the streak, when we was winning games, it was it was all about defense. We was like top ten in defense. I think it was like top five. So we just gotta get back to that, getting stops, getting on, you know, getting on around. When we get stops, we're really we're really good.